Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. This is an update to a previously uploaded video on this story. If you haven't already seen episode 1, will be linked in the description, so check it out. Next update from 5 days since I served my soon-to-be ex-wife, 30 female of 7 years, now, everyone is piling on me to talk to her. Let's see how this pans out. I hardly sleep, and I'm not thinking clear, so any advice is much appreciated. Anyway, first, some information on the current status. There has been some developments over the weekend. I wanted to show this post and get Frank's wife's permission before I posted this publicly. It appears Frank has done a runner. He has cleared out their joint accounts and is nowhere to be found. We have been in touch with the bank to try to resolve the payments but they can't do that. They have already passed the funds to a new bank. Since they are married, there is nothing they can do. He is presumably the only one with control over the receiving account and the new bank isn't sharing any information at all. I guess they are legally bound not to. They were helpful with how you can get a legal injunctive. I think that's what it's called. But that will take time. We only found out on Sunday evening when he was supposed to pick up the kids from his ex-wife. According to one of his friends, someone showed him the Reddit post and he vanished sometime between Saturday Sunday. I hated him before, but dang. This is just so cowardly. I can't even find the words to describe it. Robbing his own family? What the flip is wrong with this guy? Frank's wife is filing today. She is using my lawyer. He already has everything for me. It saves some time and money. He can basically just copy my case for her. I feel sorry for her. She loves Frank's kids, and she will probably lose contact with them since her and Frank's ex-wife aren't really on good terms. I have been going through overwhelming waves of emotions. It has been going from unbearable sorrow to absolute blinding rage over the weekend. I broke my pinky punching a door, so I haven't been in control of myself. I feel I got it more into control now. My dad has been a lot of help. He has stayed with me 247. I have visited Frank's wife and talked to her on the phone a lot. We are each other's emotional crutches and counselors at the moment. She is absolutely devastated. Her kids are with her parents and she will probably be discharged from the hospital this week. Me and my dad have offered to help out financially if she needs it. Her employer has also been very supportive, and she would thankfully be able to support herself and the kids under normal circumstances. But their financial safety net is gone. I still haven't talked to my wife. I am struggling with what to say. I don't even know how to begin. I know meeting with her will be emotionally overwhelming so I don't want to end up in a shouting match or something unproductive. My goal is to be focused on the future as much as possible. I will try to see her in the role as the mother of my children and not really get into the why and what of what she did. I will try to avoid to the best of my ability not to see her as my wife that betrayed me and the family. We will divorce, so we need to focus on how we will move on from here. Emotions are still too raw so we won't get anywhere discussing it at this point. We need to figure out custody and how she plans to get back on her feet to function as mother to our children. Children need their mother. I have tried to sort out the five most important questions or points of agreement we need to agree upon to be able to provide the best possible care. We need to ensure we give our children what they need from us. I want to try to focus on this. But every time I sit down, I either just type out gibberish or I stare at the page and nothing makes enough sense to even write down. Please help me with this. I need some clear perspective to cut through the mush in my confused sleep-deprived head. This is where I stand at the moment. I don't want to punish her. I want out. I want my kids to suffer as little as possible. I want my wife to get on with her life and move on like I hope to do. The divorce is already in process so we don't need to spend any time on that unless she wants to contest it. I don't know what she wants to do yet. As things stand, everything in our lives is one massive, painful cluster duck. We need to sort it out enough to function for our kids. This is priority one. We need to do this right now. We also need to partially reconcile at least on the roles as father and mother. I don't think we can reconcile in everything 
but we need enough to be able to function as parents. This is priority two. We can probably suck it up for priority one, but unless we deal with priority two, things will fall apart and fail over time. I don't want our lives to become more and more resentful and hateful towards each other. I hope you can help me. I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. I hope I can keep focused enough to be able to at least start a process between us to move in this direction. Update 6. So today has been a very, very crappy day, and that says a lot. Lately, my life just seems to be a long series of crappy days competing to be the crappiest day of them all. I am so grateful for all the messages, and I'm sorry I can't respond to everyone. But I do try to read everything. I'm a bit worn out, so please forgive the errors. I have been sitting here going over this day in my head over and over for hours. Typing it out and retyping it again and again. Trying to find the right words to understand what is going on to understand myself. As many of you suggested, I talked to Sue's mother yesterday in preparation to meet her today. I wanted to see if she had any more info to share. She just reconfirmed that Sue is in a bad way. The only new thing she could tell me was that after I left her at the hotel, Frank left right afterwards. He just walked past my wife crying on the floor in the hotel hallway. He apparently didn't even say anything, or at least that's what Sue told her mom. I also tried to call a few of her friends. I learned that their friend group is in full conflict now as some of her friends had strongly encouraged this affair to Sue during their weekly girl trips. They usually go to the movies, theaters, stuff like that. They've all been friends in school. Now, the supporters are apparently being ostracized. News of these events have spread like wildfire. Apparently, it has made a lot of husbands start to ask uncomfortable questions to their wives. Also, found out my wife wasn't the only one cheating. Apparently it's two other cheaters in her clique. As far as I can tell, the relevant husbands are now informed. Anyway, I believe this morning that I was prepared to meet my wife. I am ashamed and sad to say that I wasn't at all. Today's meeting was a complete disaster. A total failure. I didn't manage to do anything right. I imagined I was going to be this rock of practical professionalism. I had my rules, my viewpoint, my list of key things I had steeled myself for. We were going to talk about kids, finances, Sue's health, etc. We would find solution, find ways to move on. Instead, this day is scarred into my brain as nothing but unfiltered pain and failure. I'm pretty sure I will have this scar with me forever. I have been uncomfortable for days, but a few hours before we left this morning, I was starting to feel extremely stressed and anxious. I developed this high-pitched whine in my ears like an old TV noise. My mouth produced less and less saliva for some reason. My mouth felt uncomfortably dry. I tried to will the tension away to swallow it, push it away, but it just got worse and worse. I was pacing around aimlessly for the last hour. It's probably the longest hour I have ever felt in my life. When we finally left, I just wanted it to be over, but I felt I had to see her. By the time we arrived at the hospital, I had probably been awake for 30 hours straight. I wasn't really fully functional. I should have called it off then. We were corona controlled for temperature and symptoms before they let us in. Once I passed through the doors of the elevator, I was already badly shaking and sweating a lot. The face mask felt restrictive to breathe through, and my glasses were fogging up a bit on each breath. I was pretty close to full-on panic, I think. When we arrived at the ward, we were met by a doctor. There was some discussion before it was determined that my dad could join me. The doctor explained the do's and don'ts of the visit. I struggled to understand him. The one in my ears seemed pretty loud at this point, and my heartbeat felt like I had a jackhammer in my chest. He explained that Sue was stable, but tired, and that if he deemed it necessary, he would end the meeting and take her back to the ward. He told me Sue has been asking for me constantly day-night. He asked me some more questions. I had to explain what I was planning to say. He also asked about how I was doing. I obviously didn't look too well. I told him I needed to do this. We were shown into a room that was probably designed to try to make visitors comfortable. 
We sat down and waited. I was really struggling at this point. I tried to focus on being productive, seeing Sue as the mother of my children and my questions. My dad saw me struggling. He put his hand on my shoulder like he used to do when I was a kid. He told me it was going to be okay. It calmed me down a little. I realized how much I hate face masks now that I couldn't see his familiar, it'll be okay, son smile. Then the door opened and the orderlies come in. As they step aside, I see Sue. She's in a wheelchair and her head is at an awkward side angle and her eyes are closed, like she is sleeping. The moment I see her, all my preparations go straight to crap. All I can see is my best friend of over a decade. I see my confidant, the woman I love so deeply. I see the first person I would think of when I wake up and the last person on my mind before I fall asleep. My protective instincts kicked me in the gut so hard. I almost puke. In that moment, I was willing to do anything for her. I would fight any battle, move any mountain. She is there right in front of me, broken. My brain feels like it's short-circuiting. I wanted to help her, grab her, hold her tight, tell her it will be all right. But I just can't freaking move. I try to open my mouth, but I can't. It feels so dry. Like it's glued shut. I don't really have the words to describe it. The closest I can think of would be to be standing in my own head, looking out from behind my own eyes. If that makes any sense, it's like I'm paralyzed like a nightmare where you can't move. All the while, my heart keeps pounding faster and faster, harder and harder. I'm sweating like I'm made of water wrapped in cheesecloth. The doctor says something, and I can't understand it due to the now very, very loud screeching noise in my ears. He sits down next to my wife and says something to her. Sue looked terrible. Gray and colorless, weak and deflated. Like sitting is too much for her. She has one of those drip bags on one of those rolling hat racks they have in hospitals. Sue doesn't move. I look back and forth at the doctor and the nurse, and it all goes really, really quiet for an uncomfortably long time. Unexpectedly, Sue opens her eyes. The second she sees me, she just bolts out of the chair and rips the drip attached to her hand off in one swoop. She hugs my legs on her knees on the floor and starts crying. Her crying hurts me in ways I don't really have words for her. She begs. Forgive me. Forgive me. Like a chant over and over. She sounds very, very loud to me for some reason. Like her voice is part of the noise in my ears. Her body feels warm, soft, gentle against my legs. My thigh is getting wet from her tears. Her touch feels familiar. Like something I desperately need. Still, I'm frozen. I want so badly to grab her and just hold her, but I just can't do it. I just don't know how to move. I try, but my body just isn't working. I still can't say anything either. I'm on the verge of crying. I'm trying to swallow the pressing tears down with my dry mouth. I would probably look totally insane if it wasn't for the face mask. I want to be able to move, but no, I can't. I can't get my freaking dry mouth to open. I don't remember anything I prepared for. I don't know what to say. Sue's chant changes at some point. I love you. Forgive me. It sort of snaps me out of it for a moment, but instead of my well-prepared questions, all I manage to say is why do you hate me? Why do you hate our family? What give you the right to destroy us? I'm pretty sure this is what the doctor forbid me to say earlier. Sue looks at me with such sorrow. I look at my dad. My dad is crying. I feel very confused and I'm really getting dizzy. I stare at my wife and bang. I get this sudden biting pain in my left eye as I pop a vein. I also get this horrific nosebleed. I've never had anything like this before, like water is coming out of a faucet. My mask is full of it in an instant, and it's pouring down my chest. Sue passes out. She can never handle the sight of blood. There's some frantic activity happening around us. Still, I just sit there. The two orderlies have her into her chair and out of the room in what seems to be almost instantly. The nurse puts one of those pump blood pressure things in my arm, and I'm almost passing out. There is blood everywhere. The doctor yells something to someone, and soon afterwards, I get a needle injecting something into my arm. I just black out. 
I later learned that my blood pressure was 197 over 120, so not good. So here I am. I woke up in a different ward a few hours ago. With a massive headache, I have a terrible looking bloodshot left eye and a very sore nose. I feel like absolute crap. I'd had picked up some clothes and other essentials along with my laptop while I was out. Then he left for home to give me some space. He needed some rest for himself as well. I've never seen him so shaken up. Actually, come to think of it. I've never seen him cry before. The doctors want to keep me here until tomorrow for observation. I'm okay with that. I am very tired. It's kind of nice not having any responsibilities other than lying here. So it's been a crappy day so far. I realized that this will be a lot harder to get through than what I initially imagined. I am still shaking. I just can't stop it. I feel like such a freaking failure I didn't achieve anything. Actually, I went backwards. I couldn't have made a worse mess out of it even if I tried. I accept now that I don't know how to actually cope and do this. I just hope I can figure it out soon. Cutting emotional ties to my wife will clearly be much harder than I bargained for. I did not expect it to be like this. So there we are. I'm lost at the moment. For now, I will just try to focus on me. I need time. I need to get back on my feet. I need to take care of my kids. Those are my short-term priorities. Hopefully, when I get some distance, I will be able to see a way forward because right now, I freaking don't see any. Am I making a mistake? My brain tells me to push through, but my heart tells me don't. I wonder if Sue ever even considered the pain and suffering she would cause. I just can't understand it. What could possibly be so important to do together with Frank that it's worth all this pain? I will probably never get a satisfactory answer to that question. But why the hell would she do this? What did I do wrong? What gave her the right to destroy all our lives? Maybe if there was a WW out there reading this, could they please help me to understand this? How can a WW justify to themselves what they are doing? Is there anything they can justify this? I mean, my wife must have believed this was the right thing to do for her. Right? If she didn't, she wouldn't have done it, right? Or am I missing something? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't fit anything I know about her, or maybe I really don't know who this woman is. I took a sleeping pill. I'm very tired now. Hopefully, I can get some sleep. Sorry about the incoherent babble. I just needed to get it out of my head. Thank you all for all your help so far. And here's the next update. The sleeping pill wore off. I have been sitting here pondering for a few hours. It's kind of peaceful here. Nobody's awake as far as I can tell, except the watch nurse down the hall. I'm so sorry I haven't responded to anyone. I have read everything, and thank you for all the support and ideas. I feel pretty dejected and down actually. Typing this out helps me to think things through. There have been some comments implying that this is some sort of exercise, I freaking wish. I would give pretty much anything for this to not be my life. I have been diagnosed with hypertension that manifested itself in the nosebleed and the red eye yesterday. I got some pills I will have to take daily for the foreseeable future. I decided almost as soon as I woke up to get some form of communication going with my wife. I'm clearly not ready to meet her, but I felt I had to see her yesterday. I have been planning what to do, but one thing prevented me from making decisions I needed to make. I needed to know how I felt about her. I feel an enormous amount of shame over how much I still love her. I want to hate her so badly for what she did. Maybe I'm being an idiot. I am less and less sure of anything, but the hatred just isn't there. I want it there, but it's not. I don't understand why it's not there. It should be. She betrayed me. She hurt me more than anyone has ever done. Still, I love her. Why? I realized that not having any form of contact with her is unproductive and a little ridiculous, so I unblocked her. So many messages and calls. I can't possibly go through all of them. There must be thousands. I sent her a message asking if we could try to talk via SMS and WhatsApp. Surprisingly, she responded right away. I didn't expect a response until the morning at least. I told her we need to function for our children, 
and then we need to focus on that for now. She didn't agree. She wants us to talk about everything. I have asked her to not give me walls of text that we should try to bring up one and one issue and talk through those before moving to the next one. In response, she sent me a very long list of topics. A136, actually. The majority of them being things we could do or read to try to find pathways to reconcile. I asked her to put all reconciliation items on the back burner for now. I realize this is just too raw for both of us. I can't speak for her, but I am not ready to process this yet, at least not in any productive fashion. She tells me she hasn't really been sleeping. She also tells me that this is all her fault, that she had no valid excuse or valid reason for what she did. She swears that this is the only time she has ever done anything like this. I don't really think I believe that, or maybe I don't want to believe it. Am I trying to cling to my anger? To hatred? I don't know anything anymore. She claims the affair was like being drugged and that she wasn't able to stop herself. I don't know. Is this even true? Is this even possible? She told me she's been, like, go from work, and she claims she hasn't heard anything from Frank since the hotel. She also claims she has told family and friends what she has done, so everybody apparently knows hardly anyone has reached out to me. I feel very hurt about that for some reason. I made her swear that she will not try to end things permanently again. She promised if I just talked to her. That pissed me off so much. I felt like blackmail talked to me or else, but maybe she's just being honest. Am I reading everything from the worst possible angle? I guess I don't understand myself. Maybe I never did. But at least we are communicating a bit. Today, I take that as a win. I decided to move home and have the kids move back home if my dad can stay with us. If they can't, I will wait a few more days with the kids. I found that I doubt myself a lot now. I used to be so sure of things. Now it's like I can't decide on anything. I had a message from Frank's wife that she is back home, so I will go and see her later. I look forward to talking to her. Frank is still missing in action. No one knows where he is, or at least no one is willing to say where he is if they know. I have looked at myself and swallowed some bitter pills this morning. And come to some realizations. It is not my place or to my benefit to want to punish my wife. I need to back off and just let this run its course. Trying to force things like I have been doing is just hurting everyone. I will take a step back. I will try to find some wayward wife to answer some of the questions I have. I would try to calm myself and the situation down as much as possible. I need to find a way to get a clear head. I really need to understand how someone can make these kinds of choices. I will try to be patient and that my body process these emotions and challenges on its own time schedule. Before yesterday's meeting, I had convinced myself that the pain will pass quickly if I just complete this or that thing. What I actually need to do, what we all need to do is to mourn this properly. Our lives as we knew it are over. We can never get that back. I don't know what the new future will be, but it's kind of scaring me. I need to address that. After yesterday, I accept that there is no quick fix here. I am not in control. I can't push this through and be done with it. As so many of you told me, I need to prepare myself for the long haul. I will probably get off posting to Reddit for a while, at least for a week. I will still read comments and ask questions, but I think I need some space. There are too many conflicting perspectives and I can't even navigate my own feelings at the moment. I flip from supporting one perspective to the next on each comment I read. Thank you for all your support posting here. Talking to all of you has been very therapeutic for me. Thank you for listening to me. So many of you pointed out that my wife is also in pain and I need to take that into account. Someone commented, meet her pain and accept it. This really resonated with me, and I will try to do that. Perhaps the most important realization I had is that I need to find a way to forgive. Nurturing this anger and hurt doesn't really help anything. It doesn't mean I will forget but I do need to find a way to forgive. Everything you know is in your mind.